Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Harrisburg City Council Legislative Session. Today is Tuesday, August 28th, 2018. When I welcome everybody back from their vacation, council members, I hope you had an enjoyable vacation. Short, but enjoyable. Moving on, I'm calling this meeting to order at 6.05 p.m. Mr. Petrosky, please do the roll call. Mr. Allett. Present. Ms. Daniels. Present. Ms. Green. Present. Mr. Johnson. Here. Mr. Madsen. Here. Mr. Majors. Here. Ms. Williams. Here. Thank you, Mr. Petrosky. Moving on to an invocation, Mr. Madsen. Welcome back, everybody. I hope everybody had a prosperous summer. Uh, we had a series of losses over the last eight, eight weeks, so I just want to kind of acknowledge all of them and have a moment of silent prayer for those, uh, those that we've lost this past eight weeks. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Madsen. Moving on to Pledge of Allegiance, Mr. Johnson. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mr. Johnson. <clears throat> I'd like to announce that we had an executive session today at 5 o'clock p.m. and was to discuss legal issues. Moving on to communications, we have the mid-year budget report. Um, good evening, City Council. Uh, in front of you, you're going to see the mid-year report. Which Would you today... identify yourself to the oh, public, please? Thank um, you. Erica Regalado, the budget manager. No, I just the public watching. They just need to know who you are. Oh, okay. Sorry. Uh, yeah, so in front of you, you have the mid-year uh, budget review that we received a week ago. So I just wanted to give you an overview of what, what went on. Um, so the story of the mid-year is that there is no story um, because that's how it should be. And you know we have a lot, um, we've had a lot of scrutiny uh, regarding our finances. Mm -hmm. And the budget office has been able to establish reasonable baseline projections that we've, as we've accumulated operating data for the past three years. So with the general fund, there has been no major deltas in revenues. And this is due to the fact that we have a better sense of our major baseline revenues, which have made projecting the major revenue driver, drivers more predictable. Um, in addition to this, operating expenses have been steady year over year with no major increases in unexpected costs. With the main uh, deltas in operating expenses being personnel, which mainly due to not having a full complement in the police staff, uh, and which is a historical issue that we've seen, and medical costs which have been below budget this year for a highly unpredictable since the city is self-insured and pays actual expenses. Also, the Neighborhood Services Fund projections are in line with, bu with budgeted amounts for both revenues and expenses. The biggest variances being the Luxama escrow agreement of 400000 mm -hmm. which is still pending. And personnel expenses coming under budget uh, due to vacancies, medical uh, cost savings, and other small personnel expenses. Um, if you have any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer them. Okay. Um, I know uh, Mr. Allett, our budget and finance chair, is going to have continued meeting with this, but at this time, council members, do you have any questions? We'll start with Ms. Green. Do you have any questions, Ms. Green? Uh, right now, I don't have any questions. I don't have any questions. Thank you. Mr. Johnson. You said... What about Ben having a meeting? Yes, he will be having a meeting on this. Okay. So I guess I'll save my questions for okay. that time. All right. Mr. Allen. I mean, I'll do the same. I'm sure I'll follow up before we have a meeting on it to follow up on some items. Mr. Majors. No, not at this time. Thank you. Ms. Daniels. Yes, yeah, same. Okay. Uh, of course, we'll wait because we'll have an you know, additional meeting to address this. Okay. Thank you. Moving on to courtesy of the floor. Anyone to my right would like to come to the mic, please do so now. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. Um, my name is Mary Jean Greco, and I live in Pennsylvania Place. And I'm just doing a follow-up from my 8.30. I think I gave my talk when you had your open session on Act 47. And... Um, 
with an idea, which I know is out of the box, but dealing with distressed cities throughout the state of Pennsylvania. Um, and my thought was maybe we could use the Pennsylvania lottery to help the distressed cities, since I know that it's used for the elderly. And since we're in a, we deal with property taxes and I can't afford a hundred percent property increase, but I've, I've gone as an independent person to <coughs> work. I've gone up to the Hill and I have a, an appointment tomorrow with representative Kim. I've already talked to um, the state senator. DeSantos. DeSantos, yes. And um, I'm going to see whether or not we can get a piece of legislation started. And possibly I'll have an R and a D working together. That would be phenomenal. And uh, see where it goes. It's just an idea. There's nothing in writing yet. And I know the objections are going to come out about using the money because it's supposed to be used for the elderly. But I'm 63. I'm almost there. So you know what? I don't mind sharing the wealth. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Ms. Greco. Anyone else to my right, please? Anyone in the middle? Anyone to my left? Okay. Thank you. Moving on to approval of minutes, council members. Approval of the legislative session minutes of July 3rd, 2018. <coughs> Are there any deletions, corrections, or omissions? Hearing none, minutes will stand as such. Moving on to reports of committee, we have none tonight. Ordinance for first reading, Bill 10 of 2018. Mr. Petrosky, please read that into record. Bill 10 of 2018 was moved by Ms. Williams, seconded by Mr. Allen. It's an ordinance adopting and approving a revised Act 47 exit plan proposed by the Act 47 Recovery Coordinator for the City of Harrisburg, file pursuant to the Municipality's Financial Recovery Act and otherwise directing the preparation of ordinances, resolutions, agreements, and other documents for consideration as will be necessary for the adoption and implementation of measures proposed therein to remove the Act 47 financially distressed status designation within the next three years. That will be placed in the Administration Committee. Moving on to ordinance for amendment, we have none. Moving on to ordinance for final passage, we have none as well. Moving on to resolutions. Resolution 17, 2018, Ms. Petrosti, please read that into record. Resolution 17 of 2018 was moved by Mr. Major, second by Ms. Williams. It's a resolution <coughs> authorizing the City of Harrisburg to exercise power of eminent domain pursuant to Chapter 128 of the Third Class City Code to acquire such property as necessary for construction, erection, and extension of a permanent public works facility, which shall include the parcels of benefit hearing. Is there any questions or comments on resolution 17, council members? Hearing none, please call the vote. Mr. Allett? Yes. Ms. Daniels? Yes. Ms. Green? Yes. Mr. Johnson? Yes. Mr. Madsen? Yes. Mr. Majors? Yes. Ms. Williams? Yes. Resolution 17 passes. Thank you. Moving on to resolution 72. Resolution 72 of 2018 was moved by Mr. Allett, seconded by Ms. Daniels. It's a resolution approving the fourth proposed 2018 budget reallocation. That will be placed in Budget and Finance Committee. Moving on to Resolution 73. Resolution 73 of 2018 was moved by Mr. Major, seconded by Ms. Daniels. It's a resolution ratifying the submission of a grant application to the Commonwealth Financing Authority for the purpose of funding the Harrisburg <laughs> East-West Multimodal Connection Project. That will be placed in Public Works Committee. Moving on to Resolution 74. Resolution 74 of 2018 was moved by Mr. Madsen, seconded by Ms. Daniels. It's a resolution approving the preliminary final subdivision and land development plan submitted by Ron Metzler on behalf of the Pennsylvania Department of General Services to construct a new multi-story Pennsylvania State Archives building. That would be placed in Community and Economic Development Committee. Moving on to old business council members, are there any old business? Okay. The only thing I have is I'd like to extend a heartfelt thank you to Harrisburg City Council, the Harrisburg Housing Authority, Singers Lounge, and Levels Ready Entertainment, along with the City of Harrisburg, for their participation in the successful Weekender event held on August 17 to 19, 2018. This success would not have been possible without numerous sponsors, 
And I would like to take some time now to acknowledge and thank all of them as well. Downtown Improvement District, Hilton Hotel, Harrisburg City Council, City of Harrisburg, Harrisburg Housing Authority, Levels Ready Entertainment, The Singers Lounge, UPMC Pinnacle Health, Hamilton Health Center, DNF Distributors, iHeartRadio, Pennsylvania Housing and Finance Agency, PMG, Urban Snob, Nestle's Purina, Dauphin County EDC, and Premier Limousine. All of these entities played a major role in bringing entertainment, education, fun, and food for the three days to the residents of the city of Harrisburg, and I would like to say thank you. That's all I have for old business. Moving on to new business. Any new business council members? Mr. Johnson? Uh, sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Ms. Green? Uh, I'd just like to say that the city is accepting uh, sealed bids for three motorcycles for the police department after 2018 or newer. The information is available on penbid.net, and they must be in by 1 o'clock September 6th. Anyone else? Mr. Uh, Majors? Additionally, I'll also note that the city is receiving invitation for bid for the South 14th Street Sinkhole Improvement Project. Uh, all bid documents can be viewed and uh, printed on at PennBid. And uh, let's see here. And you have until uh, August 31st at 2 p.m. to uh, submit your bids for that project. Thank you, Mr. Majors. Mr. Johnson. All right. So I have a couple of things. Um, first thing is just to piggyback on um, President Williams in um, regards to the weekend there. I thought it was a beautiful event. Uh, we had a good turnout and even um, as we were dealing with weather circumstances. Uh, I think Sunday ended up really holding off on weather and we got brought the most turnout for our residents, but they really got a chance to enjoy um, the park and the upgrades to the band shell. It was beautiful. We had the lights working, um, but it really, uh, really want to thank um, especially um, the Parks and Rec and, and Public oh, Work sorry, empl yeah. employees who were out there all three days assisting us. Um, they really did an exemplary job in representing the city and making sure all the needs were met for that event. And um, there were a lot of praises from residents uh, wanting to see um, that a, a event continue on for future years. Um, so that's something that I hope that continues. Uh, I think it was a beautiful experience, and I think it's uh, um, definitely brought back some good memories to Reservoir Park. Um, the second thing, um, this is more of a note. Um, I did receive um, a concern from a resident, um, Ms. Floyds, who lives at 7 709 North 17th Street. Um, I guess we, we've been hearing about this um, in different areas of the city in regards to parking um, on certain streets and um, how residents are sometimes trying to um, avoid getting their cars hit by parking on the curb. Um, so she's a um, senior citizen, homeowner on a fixed income, who has had her car hit in the past um, from parking um, directly on the street on 17th Street, and she's handicapped as well. So I think um, she has parked on the curb on 17th <coughs> Street, but now she's receiving tickets. So I um, just wanted to bring that to the administration's attention to see um, and I'll pass that information along to see if there's anything we can do to kind of work with her. I think what she's trying to do now is a real inconvenience to her. She's parking um, at a church up the street and then she's getting the ride down to her house. But I think there's um, not only on 17th Street, but I think there's other streets where um, these things are occurring. And I understand the balance of where we necessarily don't want people to park on the curve, especially when we spend money investing in, in upgrading our sidewalks and how that um, deteriorates our sidewalks. Um, but I think um, as we continue to do um, different infrastructure and road projects that we begin to look at um, streets and whether um, the designs of the street, whether it should be no parking, one side parking, or should it be one way, two way, I think there's a lot of opportunities where we have more travel along roads um, with, with cars than, than um, in the past as well as um, sizes of cars and different traffic patterns, which brings about good opportunities to kind of look at, look at ways to improve to um, increase quality of life for our residents and securing their cars. So I'll share that information. And then um, last but not least, um, I did release last night 
that um, I will be resigning from city council um, beginning September um, 14th. Um, it was a really, really tough decision. I, I, I'll read my statement, but I kind of want to, for those people who didn't, um, didn't have a chance to check it out on social media. But it, personally, it really was a tough decision for me. Um, you know, the city I was born and raised in, I never lived outside the state of Pennsylvania. Uh, went to school in Penn State, <laughs> lived in Pittsburgh, um, and ever since being back in Harrisburg, you know, I've just been really invested, invested back in Harrisburg. My first job in Harrisburg um, f after um, graduation was working for the city of Harrisburg as the health officer. So if it wasn't for, and I, I give a huge thank you to her right now, uh, Mayor Thompson for really um, taking a chance on me <laughs> and giving me an opportunity to kind of start here. Um, there's no way that I would have be in a position to kind of even take the opportunities that I've been exposed to. So Harrisburg, I'm, I'm sorry. Harrisburg is a real um, special place when it comes to like my love for the city and how much I want to see the city be um, as great as I know it can be. So I'm, I'm sorry. Okay. It's all right. So I just want to, I just want residents to know that this wasn't a light decision for me, you know, this was something, um, you know, I, I truly believe um, in this opportunity that I'm taking um, with Chick-fil-A. Um, and I felt like, um, you know, God, you know, put you in a situation where you have to feel a little bit uncomfortable in order to grow. And um, this is a step of me growing. And this is a step where hopefully this growth will allow me to, um, you know, grow personally and possibly be able to even come back to Harrisburg. I'm still gonna be involved in Harrisburg. There's no way you guys can get rid of me. I'll ask my questions from far away. Um, there's certain things that I'm <laughs> tied to that I'm always gonna be coming back for. Um, so I'll always be around, but I won't be here physically like I am now. Um, but I just wanna let you guys know, I think um, to my colleagues, um, they're gonna leave. I feel like I'm leaving the city in good hands to the administration. Um, I think you guys, are on the right course, especially while we um, take the city to where we need to go financially. Um, but I think the, the main thing that we need to keep in mind is, um, you know, whether if it's down to um, this a homeowner named, you know, Ann Floyd on 17th Street, who just lived her entire life here and has simple issues just behind cars, or we have our kids and it comes to parks. We just. I think it's very important that we just keep them first. Because a lot of times, especially whether if it's um, between different um, government agencies or different people on, on boards, we allow politics to get away of simple, easy decisions. And sometimes from the outside, outside looking in, you know, you know, it looks crazy sometimes, you know, and, and this doesn't benefit anyone, it doesn't benefit the residents, it doesn't benefit none of that. So just, just, just my main thing is just be cognizant and be smart and just always know the reason why you're here to serve because these decisions impact, you know, everyone for a long period of time. And, and a lot of the decisions that we're dealing with, whether it's from the, from the city or from the school district, we have seen what bad decisions and when you don't put the residents first can lead to and how it takes sometimes years or decades to recover from. So, you know, I, I just think if we keep that in mind and we, and and we continue to have our keep true to our core purpose of why we're supposed to be here, I think Harrisburg would just do nothing but improve. So I'm not going to read my statement now because I think that's what I wanted to communicate. <laughs> no, we, don't, we don't want you to <laughs> Yeah, so, um, we don't want you to but that's it. But this is not my last meeting. And my next meeting, I'm, I'm not going to cry. <laughs> I'm just going to cry. You, you promise? Uh, yeah, I, I promise. I, I know I was going to cry tonight. I was. I didn't. It's okay. Um, That's all right. But I'm done. This, I'm, I'm, I'm done. I'm done talking. I know everyone wants to go home now.
<laughs> well, we certainly are going to miss you, especially me on my left side here. And we wish you well in your future endeavors. It's such a great opportunity, and I encourage you to, you know, do as well as you can. Thank you. Any other council members? Uh, Mr. Majors. Oh, no. oh, it's no. been a pleasure working with you. Um, I, I, I met you back when we went to high school in Side Tech. You were a year or so ahead of me. But, um, it's been a pleasure working with you. You're always willing to ask the tough questions. Uh, you never hold back. Um, when I took over as the public safety chair, you passed on a lot of valuable information to me. So I appreciate that, and I appreciate the leader you've been in our community, representing the community and the people who are in the community, not just the people who want to come to the community. So thank you. You're welcome, Mr. Matt. Yeah, I'm going to miss you and seeing you at community events. You're everywhere. Yeah, you're everywhere. Um, and over time, I think we've built a pretty strong good relationship with rapport colleagues and I respect your commitment to public service. I respect your candor, I respect your work ethic and uh, wish you well and I hope you take all those values to Atlanta and succeed in your career and I hope one day you come back. So thank you. Mr. Abbott. Yeah, uh, Corn. you know, it's, uh, it's always been a pleasure. I think one of the things that I um, really respect with working with you is your ability to to always put the politics aside and to try to strive for what's the right thing to do. Um, I think that's one of the strengths that this council I've noticed um, change even since I've been on is where I really feel like we've been able to collectively depoliticize the situation and try to arrive at good solutions. Um, and we may not always be on the same page or the same, of, the, of the same issue, but never once have I ever felt that we were ever against each other on anything. And I think that's kind of the great thing of working together in this body. You know, I want to say something about public service too, because I'm sure that um, some people would say, oh, you know, Corn's leaving council and, you know, you know, going on doing different things and abandoning us. We, you were not abandoning us. Um, you know, public service is a, is, a, um, is a tough decision. You know, we are a part-time council and um, quite honestly, none of us can live on a part-time council salary, which means we have to have careers and, and things that we do outside of this. And, um, and you know, you, you're doing the right thing for you, and you have to do that. And, um, and that's where I have utmost respect, knowing that you're doing that. Um, and it does not take away from the time that you devoted to public service. And for anyone, when we think about what pu public service means, it doesn't always mean running for office. It doesn't mean that we have to be sitting up here. Um, we're part of a larger community, and, and the way that we serve our community um, it takes on many different forms, and um, so I, I have no doubt that even if you're living in Atlanta, that you'll be back making an impact in our community. Um, so, thank you. thank you, Mr. Majors. Oh, see, well, I don't want to cry, so, uh, but uh, <laughs> but all, I, all I'll say I'll say is this for now: is uh, he's you know, Corny, you're going to be truly missed. Uh, you know, known you for quite a while, and you've been like a little brother. Um, and to see you being able to take on this new opportunity is. Uh, just warms my heart to know the commitment you had to the city, the commitment you have and will continue to have for the residents of the city of Harrisburg. Uh, and, you know, Atlanta's gaining a gem uh, in you, brother. Uh, so I appreciate you. Uh, I love you um, and wish you nothing but uh, success. And like you know, I said, we still got, a few, got you for a few more weeks. Um, I'm sure we'll be seeing you and other council members at Capona, yeah. which is uh, this weekend. Uh, had to try to lighten up the situation so I don't get too emotional. Uh, but, and we ask all residents, to, residents and folks in the community to come out to Capone this weekend, uh, enjoy uh, some fun along uh, river in the city of Harrisburg. We'll have uh, tons of activities, games, and, and vendors for you to visit. Um, but, and again, you know, brother, like I said, we, we're truly going to miss you and uh, good luck. Thank you, Mr. Majors. Ms. Daniels? Uh, congratulations, and I'm really proud of you for taking an opportunity towards growth. Thank you. And one more thing, don't talk him to death. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we were going to say, do the oh. selfie now, we'll roast you later. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we, we're very, very proud of you, and we hope that um, when you go down, you represent the city of Harrisburg well in the land. Thank you. Thank you. Any other new business council members? I do have a, quite a few, uh, one from Mr. Majors, Mr. and Mrs. Majors, a thank you card to City Council. Thank you all for the generous gift. We, we sincerely appreciate it. I'm grateful to have you all 
as my colleagues. Sincerely, Mr. and Mrs. Majors. And I want to thank you, Mr. Majors, from City Council. I have something from Juanita Edgington Grant. She says, calling all veterans. It's regarding the Hub Veterans Housing Apartments. There are 20 newly constructed one bedroom apartment units and they're now available for rent in the heart of the city, Uptown Harrisburg, PA. The community amenities include a community room, fitness center, computer lab, on-site laundry room, and a billiard room. It's located at 1820 North Fifth Street in Harrisburg, PA. And for application and or assistance, please visit 1821 Fulton Street, Monday through Thursday from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. Contact is Ms. Juanita Edgerton Grant at 717-447-2841. So all the veterans, this is a very nice veterans housing apartment. And you certainly love it. Please look forward to uh, meeting Ms. Grant. She's available, as I indicated, from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m., Monday through Thursday. Now back to Mr. Johnson, since he put me in a horrible position again, we lost Mr. Uh, Baltimore, we then lost uh, Destiny, and now we're losing you, but it's all good because we know that you're going on to do better things and greater things. But I just want to explain to the public how we will fill this position. City Council has 30 days from September to 14 to fill the vacancy of Mr. Johnson's seat. We will use the same process as always by making the application available on our website starting September the 7th. The deadline to return applications will be on September the 21st before noon. Each eligible candidate will be contacted and invited to attend a public meeting on October the 3rd at 5.30 p.m. At this meeting, each candidate will be given an opportunity of one to two minutes to introduce themselves to city council and explain why they are interested in the vacant seat. Council members will nominate one candidate of their choice. The city clerk will collect and read the names of the nominated candidates who should be prepared to be interviewed that night. After the interviews are completed, a decision will be made that evening. The selected candidate will be sworn in at the October 9th legislative session at 6 p.m. So for all those interested parties, please have your information in before September 21st, before 12 noon. And please, please do not call me. I received 14 phone calls today regarding the vacancy. Please go to the website and submit your, your application. Thank you. Any other new business council members? Hearing none, you have a motion to adjourn. So moved. Have a second? Second. Thank you. Meeting is adjourned.